Hello, um, dear colleagues. Um, it's a great pleasure um, to present the key uh, aspects of my uh, this year's ASH presentation. Uh, my name is Katja Weisen. I'm uh, at the University a Medical Center Hamburg Eppendorf in Hamburg in Germany, and I'm presenting this in behalf of my co-PI, Lisa Leipold, and all my co-investigators. And we showed data of isotuximab, carfilzomab, lenalidomide, and dexamethasone, uh, the ISA-KRD uh, regimen um, in patients with high-risk newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. And this was a planned interim analysis of the GMMG concept trial. Uh, so, uh, we all know that patients with high-risk multiple myeloma uh, show uh, still a significantly impaired outcome, especially uh, recently uh, the GAIN1Q entered uh, clearly uh, the overall uh, spectrum of uh, the high-risk features. And we also learned that uh, achievement of MRD negativity uh, so um, getting a minimal residual disease negative state is key uh, for improving survival in both standard and high-risk patients. And this was much more uh, possible um, when anti-CD38 strategies entered our therapeutic armamentarium. Isatuximab is one of those anti-CD38 antibodies, which is uh, proved in several countries in uh, the context of standard of care treatment uh, for relapse disease, and uh, which um, is part of our regimen we use here in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. So this uh, trial, which uh, we presented, is a phase two academic trial investigator initiated. It's solely made for high-risk patients, newly diagnosed, and we introduced the ISA-KRD regimen in induction, consolidation, and uh, maintenance. Patients who were transplant eligible um, also underwent uh, high-dose methylene therapy and autologous stem cell transplantation. The trial recruited in two cohorts, um, one cohort from 2018 to 2020, including both transplant eligible and transplant non-eligible patients. And uh, we reopened the trial just to provide also access for high-risk patients to this broad public regimen and to um, gain more substantial and robust data on the survival from um, June 2000. Um, uh, 21 uh, to November 2022. And here we report on the primary endpoint, uh, which is the MRD negativity after consolidation of the first cohort of 153 patients. Uh, here, I would like to share with you the study design. You see here that ISA-KRD was given for six cycles induction, four cycles consolidation, and in a triplet maintenance without DEX. In patients who were transplant non-eligible had eight cycles of induction. However, the vast majority of patients included into this trial were transplant eligible patients, 127 of the included 153. Those two arms ran in parallel. Um, only high-risk patients could enter this clinical trial. They had to have a high tumor burden, so all patients had to have ASA stage 2 or 3, and all patients had to have at least one of the following high-risk features, deletion 17B, translocation 414, translocation 14 and 16, and or more than three copies, 1Q21. Here you see the time point of the primary objective, which was MRD negativity after consolidation measured by next generation flow with a sensitivity of 10 to the minus five. And this endpoint uh, meant um, to be about 15 to 18 months after um, inclusion for transplant eligible patients and about 12 months uh, for transplant ineligible patients after they started treatment in this trial. Here you see the patient population. The interim analysis was an intent to treat analysis. 
um, all patients in the transplant non-eligible population uh, contributed to this analysis in a final manner. And as we had an internal over-recruitment of the transplant eligible a cohort, according to the statistical analysis plan, 99 transplant eligible patients contributed uh, to this um, intent to treat analysis. And you see also the non hypothesis um, underlying this um, trial. Uh, the patient disposition shows that of the 99 transplant eligible uh, patients started, you see here that 97 received treatment, 74% um, um, came up to maintenance, so three-fourths of all patients, a bit less than the transplant non-eligible arm, the most common reason for treatment discontinuation on this way down was progressive disease. Here you see the main patient's characteristics. We had a slide over representation of IgA. This is uh, as the trial only included high-risk patients. We had an equal distribution of ISS stage two and three. The most common high-risk uh, cytogenetic feature was deletion 17P followed by translocation 414. Of note, um, about 30% of included patients had two or more high-risk cytogenetic aberrations. Uh, this is the primary endpoint. This is the key result. And we saw in the central lab analysis in an intent to treat analysis that uh, the MRD negativity rate after consolidation was 67.7% for transplant eligible and 54.2% for transplant non eligible patients. And this trial was statistically significant. Of note, you see that uh, nearly all patients who reached that endpoint were MRD negative. We had only three in total MRD positive patients um, at this uh, time uh, after consolidation. So this is some up here in the bottom. Uh, 72 transplant eligible patients reached end of consolidation. 66 had an available MRD result. 63 were MRD negative. Here are the best response rates. Overall response rate was very high, was close to 95% uh, in the transplant eligible, 88.5% in the transplant non-eligible population. And if you, as you see here, nearly all response per D, and we had more than 70% complete remission rate in the transplant eligible population. Our uh, response clearly deepened over time. Let's focus on the transplant eligible patients where the uh, equal or more than CR rate um, started with 49% after induction and went to 73% after the end of consolidation. Um, and uh, this is again shown for all patients. Uh, regarding safety, we saw that we had overall um, a main hematologic toxicity of the isoq and regimen with the predominant uh, neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. The most common non-hematologic toxicity uh, were uh, clearly infections with 28% uh, grade uh, 3 or 4 infections. We had no signal in the transplant eligible arm for an increase in cardiac events um, in this quadruplet regimen in the transplant non-eligible arm with age up to 87 when recruited, we had a bit um, expected more cardiac events. We had a few infusion-related reactions only in uh, cycle one and overall um, a low rate of peripheral neuropathy. So in conclusion, we can clearly state that um, treatment with isaac -D, newly diagnosed multiple myeloma, plus minus hydros, mufflin, and autologous stem cell transplantation. And um, when isaac -D is given in induction consoli and consolidation induced very deep responses, the trial met the primary endpoint of MRD negativity post-consolidation, reached statistical significance with a 67.7% MRD negative transplant eligible and 54.2% MRD negative transplant non-eligible patients. 74% of patients included into the trial reached the primary endpoint. 63 of 66 available transplant eligible patients were MRD negative at the end of consolidation. 
We had high deep response rates in both transplant eligible and non eligible patients with responses deepening over time. Isaac care, the overall is well tolerated. The overall safety profile was consistent with previous reports um, about the individual drugs. And now the trial is fully enrolled, and we are looking uh, on additional analysis on survival and high risk subgroups. So that we think that our data clearly support the use of optimized quadruple therapy in first line treatment, especially in patients with high risk disease. And this was, and I would like to thank um, uh, uh, all the contributing centers in Germany, a really joint effort. And this would not be possible um, without dedicated patients and their families supporting this being included our partners. And also that we received the drug in funding uh, from the pharmaceutical industry. And I thank also again uh, Ash that we uh, were able uh, to present our data there.